So you're new to Pro Tools and you want to learn how to set up your sessions and set up your audio track so you can start recording? Keep on watching this video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment video and check this out. What I'm going to be doing in this video is basically putting together a bunch of series of videos of Pro Tools tutorials for first time Pro Tools users. So if you just picked up Pro Tools, you've never used Pro Tools before and you want to start recording, you want to know how to start using the software, then you want to make sure that you subscribe to this channel as well as hit the notification bells because I'm going to be giving you a series of beginner Pro Tools tutorials showing you guys how to use the software. Then and maybe in the next process I may show you how to set up your audio so you can go ahead and start recording through your interface if you don't know how to do that now we're gonna be doing this on a Windows PC if I have to make another video showing you guys how to do this on a Mac then I'll go ahead and do that but it's pretty much the same concept so as long as you know uh, your hardware that you're gonna be recording through or your interface you got your microphone set up properly then everything from there is gonna work itself out I'll show you guys how to do route the ins and the outs to be able to get your recording going and we can pretty much go from there so if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button right now as well as the notification bell let's get started always right click your Pro Tools logo and run it as administrator if you want to create a new session inside of Pro Tools you want to go ahead and hit control N that'll open up a new session as a quick key little quick tip for you or you can just go to file new session once you create a new session you can either open up a template which Pro Tools gives you a series of templates that you can start off with just in case you don't know how to uh, set up your own sessions. I mean, I personally only recommend this if you know exactly what it's for, post-production, you know, different things like that. But if you don't know exactly what this is, then I'll do more videos about that later in the future so you'll know exactly what you want to do. For me personally, as you can see, I got like R&B Vox. So these are a series of uh, templates that I created from scratch to go ahead and uh, create my own templates for when I'm recording. But if you are new to Pro Tools, the first thing that you actually want to do is just create a blank session. So go ahead and create a blank session. Down here with the session parameters, you have a few options, AIFF or you have WAVE. I personally stick to WAVE. Um, it seems to work just fine, especially when I need to transfer files to anybody else that are going to be basically using my audio files to either uh, do a collaboration in a session or whatever the case may be. So just go ahead and stick with Wave. Once you create your blank session, what you want to go ahead and do is I recommend you recording at 24-bit and 48 kilohertz. 48 kilohertz is going to give you more dynamic range. I think that's the best way to start any of your sessions off. If you want to go ahead and record at a higher sample rate, that is your choice. Um, just know that the higher the sample rate, the less number of tracks you're going to be able to have to record. Uh, the lower the sample rate, the more number of tracks that you're going to be able to have, but also the less dynamic range that you'll be able to have in a session. So I think that a sweet spot for me tends to be uh, 48 kilohertz if you're going to be recording from home. Anything else that you record, uh, 48, 88, 96, if you decide to do that, you can, but you just won't be able to have more number of tracks. Okay, so on the process, if you're just starting off this session, go ahead and choose 24-bit and 48 kilohertz, and we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Once you do that, you want to go ahead and name your session. So we are just going to name this uh, My First Session. Now, I guess I kind of went a little bit fast on that portion. So what I'll do is once you create a new session, file new, make sure that you create these sessions either on a fast external hard drive, that's a SSD, or if your main primary hard drive on your actual computer is fast enough, that's also a SSD. Uh, that'll make it to where it's able to read and write a lot faster and you're able to um, save your session somewhere that you know that you're going to be able to have enough space for your sessions to run properly. Okay, so, all right, so this is this is your Pro Tools session. This is what you're going to have and this is where you're going to start everything. Right now, this is what you would call the edit window. The edit window is where all your number of tracks are going to be. It's going to be where you are recording your vocals, things like that. That's going to be where you're going to be doing automation, um, you know, chopping up your vocals, things like that. Now, if you go ahead and hit control equal, that is going to take you to the mix window. And you can't see anything right now in the mix window because I don't have anything in there. But to go ahead and show you guys how to start your first track, what you want to do is before you even start a session, go ahead and go up to the, the setup 
and go to your hardware and in the hardware your peripherals what it should say in there is whatever interface that you're recording through or if you're recording through the computer it should say either something like a uh, voice meter or if you're on a mac uh pro tools aggregate or something like that or just, or just something that you're going to be recording through inside of your particular software that's being treated as your interface for the software mine is usually my m audio fast track ultra or my audio my presonus audio box uh, since I'm recording through voice meter right now, I don't actually have that set up. So in a process, uh, yours would say whatever your interface is in this particular area. And then after you do that, you just go ahead and hit OK. The next thing that you want to go ahead and check is your playback engine. Your playback engine is key. Now, I told you that normally if you record through your playback engine, that is going to be your audio interface. So if it's your audio box, if it's your M Audio Fast Track Ultra, your Scarlet, your Focusrite Scarlet, whatever the interface may be, just make sure that you choose that name. Again, I'm not choosing that name because for this particular video and video purposes, I'm recording through my voice meter so I'm able to do this tutorial. So you would click whatever interface it would be. And then after that, in a process, what I recommend as for the hardware buffer size, you wanna choose the lowest number as possible. So it would either be um, 64, 128, um, 256, 512, or, or 10, 10 something, 1024, something like that, right? So in a process, basically the bigger or the higher the number is for your buffer size, the more of the latency or delay that you're gonna have on your vocals. So if you wanna have the least latency on your vocals then i recommend you recording for your interface at 64 or 128. those two seem to work perfectly for me there's no delay and i'm able to record just fine so make sure that you choose 128 or 64. for me in this process i'm only able to choose 512 because the voice meter software is at 512 and that's what you want to record if you're doing video stuff like i'm doing right now Okay, so after you do that, the next thing that I recommend you doing is actually going down to the I.O. Your I.O. setup is definitely key and it's important. Your I.O. setup is going to tell you what all the ins and outs that you have on your interface. For my particular interface, I normally have my uh, Fast Track Ultra, so it's going to base it off the settings that I have. So if this was your interface, what you would normally want to do is just go ahead and make sure that one says left and two says right, and they're all in the stereo format, right? But check this out. When you click this drop down arrow, this analog N1, where it says mono, that just means my first input on my interface. So that first input on my interface is gonna be the one that I record in, or if I'm going through uh, number two on my interface, then I would have that one as number two. So if you notice it says mono here, and this one says mono here for left and right. All right, so that basically says that these are my audio inputs on my interface. So whatever microphone input that you're gonna record through on your interface, that's gonna be the one that you select. So just in this particular situation, I have it on stereo and I have it selected for one and two. And then the process is mono here and it's mono here. So if you decided to record through one of them, uh, and you're using your interface, it'll basically allow you to rename it and say my mic input or mic input one or mic input two. That's what you would want to name these. So mic input one, mic input two, mic input three, mic input four, whatever the case may be. The outputs are just going to be your stereo outputs left and right. That's going to go through your, your interface output left and right in two channels, left and right. So as you can see, as it says stereo here, there's no drop down for it because it's going through uh, a channel to where there's two, okay? So in a process, you see stereo format is gonna say left and right. As long as this says left, this says right, your stereo output should be able to go. Now down here where it says your default output bust is, my output is going through the stereo out, as you can see by this little dot here, stereo one and two that means that everything that comes out of my master track or my master fader is going to be coming out two channels so i'm going to be able to hear it in both of my studio monitors okay or your both of your headphones now we'll talk later about the audition paths we don't need to focus on that right now but it's pretty much the same concept it's just saying that uh if you wanted to reroute something differently say through some headphones 
or do something for like a headphone mix and set up a different mix. That is still what allow, and you set it up through a bus track, that still would allow that output to be auditioned through either another, another set of monitors or another set of headphones. So we'll focus on that later, okay? Now, for you people that are just starting it and it's like, yo, none of this is working. Um, I don't have those same options. So this is what you can do. You can hit control A and then you can go ahead and hit delete path. Once I hit delete path, if you start your session and it's like this, do not freak out. Do not freak out. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work. It won't have any audio going in or out of your interface because there is no password to go through. So after you hit control A to delete it, or if it's something that's not working for you, hit control to, control A to highlight everything and delete everything out. And then just go ahead and hit default. Once you hit the default, even though this changed to my voice meter, the same rules apply as if this was my audio interface. This would just say fast track ultra input one, input two, etc. It did the same thing, okay? And the same thing over here, control A for your stereo output, you'll go ahead and delete it, delete path. And then you'll do the same thing. Oh no, my stereo output doesn't have uh, any stereo outs for me. What can I do? I can't hear any sound coming from my Pro Tools. Sure you can, just go ahead and hit default and boom, it pops it right back up, okay? Now in the process, after hitting okay for this, that's all you pretty much want to do. You don't want to focus on anything and just to double check, you don't want to worry about, oh, uh, if you do decide to do anything as far as your bus tracks, it's pretty much going to be the same concept. What If you set up stereo bus or if you set up mono bus, as long as it's going out of your actual out of whatever your interface is, then you should be able to hear your bus, okay? And, it's, and if your bus tracks are routed to your stereo out, then you'll be able to hear it. But don't worry about that. This is all beginner stuff. I don't want to go too deep in depth. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do, creating your session. <clears throat> so to go ahead and set up your audio track, what you want to do is just go ahead and hit shift, control, in. And this is where you're going to set up your mono track. So let me go ahead and move this up. Shift, control, in. And after you set up your mono track, what you want to do in the process is go ahead and use control over. Okay, control over, control left, control right is basically going to give you the option to pick between stereo or, or mono. If you're going to be recording vocals or, you know, single instruments, anytime you're recording vocals, I recommend that you go ahead and record it in mono because that's going to allow you to have more control over that vocal. If you're going to be recording in the center or if you're going to be recording to the uh, 50 to the left, the left channel or the right channel, whatever the case may be, record in mono and then we're going to set it up as an audio track. So if you hold down control and do control up and down, then it's basically going to change these from audio, aux, master, midi, audio, aux, master, midi. So what I want to do, what you want to do is go ahead and hit leave that at audio track and leave that in samples. The next thing that you want to do is go ahead and hit control shift in again. And then the next track you want to have it as a master fader. Okay. So we're going to hold down control and we're going to change it till we get master fader. And then we're going to have the master fader as stereo. Why? Because we want all our music and our instruments to be coming out of two channels, left and right. We want to hear it in both headphones, uh, left and right and both speakers, right? So you want to have that as stereo. So your audio is a mono audio track and your master fader is going to be a stereo master fader to go out of two channels. Okay. So in the process, you just want to go ahead and hit create. Once you go ahead and create, the first thing that I recommend that you do is name your track. Name your track and your track is going to be um, lead take. Boom. So after you hit the lead take, what you want to do is go ahead and hit control plus, and that's going to take you to the mix window. Once you go to the mix window, in order to start recording, the first thing that you want to do is go here on the IO. This is going to be your interface. So whatever your interface is, fast track, ultra, focus, right, whatever the interface is. Now, this is where you want to go ahead and set it up for your input one or whichever input you're, input you're recording on, on your interface. Make sure that if you're recording through a condenser mic, that you have 48V phantom power engaged and make sure that you have the gain level 
turned up on your interface for the mic input that you want to record in. Also, if there's any type of buttons that's going to be um, that are meant to engage on your interface, make sure you either push that button in or release that button out to go ahead and start getting some signal. If you can see signal on your interface, then you'll be seeing signal inside of Pro Tools. OK, so now in a process, what you want to go ahead and do is go to input. The first input on the IO and you just want to choose your interface. So if input one, it would be input one for you right in the process. So now what, what happens if I change this? Check this out. If I wanted this sound to go ahead and go through what I'm recording through right now, now you can see the levels. For me, it's input two because I'm recording through input two on my interface. So now I'm able to record vocals or you can actually see my vocal signal. For you, it might be input one, three, four, five, six, whichever one, just plug into input one if you have it available and go ahead and record through that one. For me, it's input two. All right, so now in the process, if, if you notice my output for the stereo, make sure that your output says that you're going through your stereo output one and two of your interface. I'm going through stereo output of my voice meter software. That's why you're able to see the signal. Okay, so again, input would be the top one for interface and the output would be the bottom one for output, stereo one and two. If you notice, I set up a master fader as well. The master fader allowed me to set up a stereo aux. So that's why you're able to see signal on my master fader, giving you signal from whatever I'm going to be recording vocals in. So go ahead. If I just want to go ahead and do a test right now, let's just go ahead and record that vocal. All right, so I'm recording vocals through a dynamic microphone right now. Uh, I don't have any uh, crazy levels set up right now. This is just for the purposes of the video. If you guys notice, it's actually recording the vocals, um, as you can see here on the screen. Now check this out. I'm going to play it back. I'm not wearing any headphones, so I don't know uh, what it sounds like right now. But All right, so I'm recording vocals through a dynamic microphone right now. Uh, I don't have any... Uh, crazy level set up right now. This is just for the purposes of the video. Now, I'm going to assume that it sounds pretty good. The reason being is because the reason why I'm going to assume that it sounds pretty good is because my levels are hidden in the green. Uh, it's not in the red or anything. If you're hitting in the red, then likely you're distorted and things like that. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. That's all I pretty much wanted to show you guys. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to import your instrumentals inside of Pro Tools so you can start recording. Um, and then we'll continue to build on the series from there. If this video helped you, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Also, in the process, leave me some comments and let me know what you think. Did this video help you out? Let me know on the bottom. If you're new to Pro Tools, are you excited? What kind of tutorials do you actually want to see in the future? And we can go from there. Thank you for watching this video. Share it with somebody. Went to sleep. Oh, to wake up in the morning like everything.